you're listening to Performance Anxiety on the Pantheon Podcast Network, and I'm your host, Mark. I'm joined by Buffalo, New York singer Jim Crean. Jim grew up around music. His dad was a drummer and really helped Jim gain an appreciation for music. But he was also big into sports, which makes sense for a guy from Buffalo. But once he started playing, he was all in. He started playing bars at a really young age, and he's been putting out music for decades. He's a member of the Buffalo Music Hall of Fame, so when Carmine and Vinnie Apice toured with their Drum Wars bands, they did some scouting before each show so they could include local musicians in it. That's how they found Jim and began working with him on a regular basis. Jim also tells the story of why the brothers each pronounced their last name differently. Jim's new band, and it is a band, features Vinnie Apice and guitarist Steph Hond, and it is 100% the product of the pandemic. This band is different for Jim, even the songwriting uses a different approach. They're playing their live debut in January at the Heavy Metal Hall of Fame. So check out the new album, Kill the Beautiful. Grab a merch bundle while they last. Check them out on Facebook and check us out at Performance ANX on Twitter and Instagram. We're also on YouTube and Facebook. Reach out through any of those platforms or at the Performance Anxiety Pod at gmail.com. Grab our merch at performanceanx.threadless.com. Or buy us a cup of coffee at ko-fi.com slash performance anxiety. Now prepare to have Jim Crean of Scream Taker take your breath away on performance anxiety on the Pantheon Podcast Network. Hey, this is Jim Crean from Scream Taker. Uh, pick up the new Scream Taker album, Kill the Beautiful, and you're listening to performance anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, the way I like to get into everything is to kind of find out how you got to where you are. And, and usually that means finding out how music, f- you know, how it first made an impact on you. I mean, were you a, a kid and was, what were you listening to? Were your parents making you take lessons or was it something you found on your own? How did you really start getting into music? Um, all of that, you know, I, <laughs> my, really my dad was a drummer, you know, so oh, cool. I was exposed to music at a, at a very young age, you know, so they used to practice at my house. So every day I would see these, well, not every day, but a couple times a week, I'd see these cool rocker guys coming over. And, and, um, you know, I was really into sports as a kid okay. and, um, and still am. So, you know, uh, I would see all that. And I, I thought it was really cool. And then, um, I think for my, maybe I was in the fifth, fifth grade or fourth grade, I bought a, a guitar. Oh, okay. You know, for my communion. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, so it was kind of cool. So I started that, and then um, by 13, I was starting to take guitar lessons and all that, and um, playing in bars at 15. So I, wow. I started really young, yeah. Wow. So were you, were you singing that early on, too, or did that come a little later? I started singing around maybe, uh, yeah, around 13, 14, maybe 15. Wow. That's when I really started, yeah. Were you doing that all that in, in public when you're out at that I started playing in bars probably that's a good question I started playing in bars at like 15 and, and so you were you singing and playing guitar at the same time at that point no I, I dropped a guitar completely and I just oh. you know I would write songs just focused on, on singing oh. so I had a good guitar player at the time so he was better than me so he took over the guitar and <laughs> I just sang well that's smart yeah so, that's fun so you're Too young again yeah <laughs> so you grew up in the in Buffalo is that right yeah, Buffalo, New York. It's a small town, uh, upstate New York. You know, when you say New York, everybody thinks New York City or whatever, but it was Buffalo, New York, and yeah. really cool music scene when I was growing up. Um, well, that's what I wanted to know about. Like, like yeah. what, what was the scene for you as, you know, 13, 14, 15-year-old kid gigging out there? How Were there a lot of places for you to play? Every night of the week you could play. I mean, I didn't, but, you know, you could play every night of the week back then. Um, you know, the drinking age was only 18, so... Uh, but yeah, I mean, there were so many bars and, and nightclubs and theaters, and there was a really thriving scene here. And Buffalo is really exciting. Yeah, and then, you know, we go up to Rochester, New York, and Syracuse, New York, and so we do the whole ninety. Uh, they call it. Where are you in Washington? I see you're Washington. I'm in. Right? Well, I'm in D.C. or outside of D.C. But I went to college up in Rochester. At, uh, uh, oh, you did R.I.T. for a few years. For yeah. sure. So you know, you know that you know the whole market. Oh whole yeah. Market. Yeah, and then we got, we sprinkle in some Pennsylvania in there, and so you could do a lot back then. We play every night of the week, which I did. So, at what point did it become apparent that music was what you wanted to do? And when, 
or maybe 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 the better question to ask is is at what point did you realize it's something that you could do for a living right there and then i mean wow. i i think i yeah i saw aerosmith play and and uh and i saw a band called local band here called talus oh yeah billy sheehan billy sheehan for sure saw them open and i said okay that's i know what i'm i'm doing with the rest of my life wow. so really the defining point for me and uh and i never looked back i just been doing it hard since 40 some 40 42 years that's amazing Oh, Crazy. that is so awesome. <laughs> when did you start really branching out of that Buffalo, Rochester area and, and start going a little more national? The national thing started happening about maybe 12 years ago, 13 years ago. Okay. Um, but I in, in 2000, I formed a band called Hair Nation. Yes. And it was a tribute. Yeah. So we're a tribute band. You've heard of us. We've been around all over now. Yeah. But 22 years we've been together. Wow. So that's really when all the that started. I started doing a lot of that. Where we opened for a lot of national bands. And we do a lot of that type of stuff. And then, in, I don't know what year it was, 2010 maybe, formed, I joined the band, uh, the Peace Brothers. Okay. I ran a Vinny Apathy in Peace. And uh, that's when I started really going national with it playing all over the, the world why it's been, uh, great right why can't they agree on a pronunciation of their last name you know it's funny because they did uh, it used to be apathy is the right way to say it okay that's what i thought but, but what happened was carmine played with rod rod stewart and rod could never say apathy so yeah crazy <laughs> so one night he just said to carmine he goes can i just call you a piece and carmine thought to himself crazy money you can call me whatever you want yeah exactly and that's really a true story and then then the, he went with a piece wow. and Vinny was apathy and their other brother frank calls himself a pj <laughs> isn't that crazy <laughs> that's 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 it that's about it i had no idea that their other brother oh my gosh crazy so when i'm on stage i gotta you know i gotta be careful because i gotta say you know Vinny apathy on the drums and carmen a piece on the drum uh, when i when i announce them out you know i'm gonna i blame rod stewart for a lot of things yeah <laughs> rod's great I, he, I i was a photographer for years and I, I do a lot of live band work and rumor has it that it's rod stewart's fault that photographers are only in major venues are only allowed to shoot the first three songs so really? that's the room. The, the, I often wonder why that was because the room we, we have that there's that same role. And I, and I never understood why three songs, what, what are you going to do with three songs? And I know why, because he doesn't want to break a spot. Yeah. And you don't want his hair to fall sure. down, but it's exactly the truth. But I always thought those are some of the best pictures when you're, you know, all sweaty and yeah. in the, in the mode. And you, you know, you went through about five or six songs and, the band doesn't get into it until cl at least halfway through it. That's when everybody starts really getting, you know, feeling it. The best pictures are like the uncle. About Rod, but that makes sense. So yeah, I, I heard that from Paul Natkin. I had him on the the podcast a, f a few months ago, and he swears that that's what happened. So I'm gonna believe. Probably true. So Probably true. <laughs> we'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Without a healthy mind, being truly happy and at peace is hard. The good news is therapy works. But what is therapy exactly? It's whatever you want it to be. Maybe you're not feeling motivated right now and would like some tools to help. Or maybe you're feeling insecure in relationships or at work, not dealing well with the stress. Whatever you need, it's time to stop being ashamed of normal human struggles and start feeling better because you deserve to be happy. And now you don't have to worry about finding an in-person therapist near you to help. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. Try doing that in person. So join the millions of people who are seeing what online therapy is really about, it's always a good time to invest in yourself because you are your greatest asset. And a special offer to Performance Anxiety listeners, you can get 10% off your first month of professional therapy at betterhelp.com slash performance anxiety. That's betterhelp.com slash performance anxiety. Thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this podcast.
Hey guys, I want to talk to you about socks for a second. Why not? It's a music podcast. But I tried a pair of socks from Boldfoot and loved them. I've only worn them once because my kids have stolen them. So in my household, that's the best endorsement I can give. And I guess it's fitting because the design I chose was jailbait. Wait, jailbird. The design I chose was jailbird. I might keep that in. The socks are 100% American made and 5% of all proceeds go to veteran charities. It makes sense seeing that Boldfoot is a family and veteran owned company. They have a huge variety of styles. So check out boldfoot.com and buy some of the best socks you've ever slapped on your feet and help veterans while you're at it. That's boldfoot.com. So how did you meet uh, Vinny and Carmine? A P P I C E. Vinny Carmine and Vinny A. How, so how did yeah. you meet those guys and start playing with them? They were doing this drum wars band that morphed into you know, what it is now a real band. Yeah. But they were doing it in every city. They would get different musicians. Oh. So they okay. pick like all stars from every you know you submit tapes and whatnot, and then every city they would pick different musicians for for that city. Oh, cool. So they did a whole run and then by the time it came, I got picked by city Buffalo. And, um, by the time that came up, they met me and they had, you know, a bunch of dates lined up after me and they said, we found our guy. Wow. So they actually literally had their manager or agent contact the next night it was in Rochester and Syracuse uh, and all the whole thing and canceled the band and just took me with them. Crazy. So, and I haven't looked back since I've been with them ever since. albums already wow I'm working on an album so it's been crazy we did a live album and a studio album work on another studio album so it's been a great run oh that's such a great story mm -hmm. and like now we're like family like brothers it's crazy but you know it's i mean these two are rock legends right there you know oh, sorry my daughter just <laughs> came in the door and it came in and slammed the door twice that's okay. hey that's okay uh, i swear <laughs> the dangers of podcasting in the living room Listen, I mean, so, things have changed since COVID. We, I'm here, I'm in my office at home. You know, it's like years ago, you used to come in the studio or whatever, you know, now exactly. it's a whole different game. It really is. And you can't predict anything. And now she's staring at me. Okay, it's fun. <laughs> Go on, how finish this? I only have a few minutes. <laughs> oh my gosh. So at what point did you start doing solo albums? Because you've got several that are Jim Crean albums. They're not you know, yeah. bands. So it was that after you started working with the way the, before it. Oh, okay. 91. So I, you know, I'm, I have a bunch of albums out with different bands. I was in right you know, throughout the eighties and, um, like four or five albums with different bands from the eighties. But then in the nineties, 91, things just got so crazy with all the, the, the music scene, you know, yeah. the music yeah. business. So then I decided I'm just going to keep writing songs and put out what I want to put out, you know, Oh, okay. Put out what was hot at the time, you know, grunge music and all that type yeah. of stuff. Yeah. I would just keep writing songs, and, and I did my first solo album in 91. Six, and I just kept doing them throughout the whole thing. I think I'm on my ninth solo album. Oh wow, wow! Yeah, I just keep doing them. And after hearing some of the well, the new band and some of the older stuff, I absolutely get why Vinny and Carmine fell in love with your voice. I mean, you've got this 
Paul Stanley meets Ronnie James Dio quality to your voice. And it's it's super evident on tracks like Caught in the Middle. That's uh, that song particularly. I was like, I the light bulb went off. Boom. You can say. get why they just absolutely dig your voice cool it's a really cool call. it's really amazing to be able to hear a little bit of a couple other people's voices within your voice and it, how you make it your own I, that's really great that caught in the middle we did that on the insatiable record yes and that feature that was jimmy bain's you know the original bass player from Dio, his last recording ever. Oh wow! Um, I didn't realize that. Forecast, yeah, literally, I got the the track back from him on that Friday, right? And yeah. then that's Sunday he passed away in the on the cruise. Oh, so that was his last recording ever. Wow. Um, and it also featured Frank Domino from Angel. Me and him did duet style vocal and Benny Apatzi on drums. Oh my gosh! That just major on guitar. That just blew me away. I had no idea. Yeah, so that was cool. But um, yeah, it was a deal cover we did, and uh, that was cool. That was a good one. But yeah, I try when I sing. I try and you know I, I like to put my influences in there. But I try and over the years, you just end up crafting your own style. And oh yeah, yeah. more so. Yeah. yeah, but there's great mix for a hard rock vocalist, and it's I really like it. I've really been enjoying it. Listening to it over the past couple of days, and with the new new Scream Taker album plus the older stuff, it's uh, it's a great hard rock voice yeah i embraced it i mean years ago i used to try and be more of a melodic you know which i still do if you listen to my solo stuff very melodic yeah um, but i embraced the heavy hard rock singer that i am <laughs> I've, I've embraced it over the years so oh you need cool. to yeah so there's the new band scream taker debut album kill the beautiful and piecing everything together in the research it sounds like this band is really a, a product of the pandemic is that right 100 percent. steph hond who played with paul Liano, amazing musician guitar player keyboard player singer songwriter bass player every, all, all in one him and i worked on my last album called london fog with solo album. yes and Vinny played on that as well and a lot of great musicians played on that record So what happened was the pandemic came and me and Steph became good friends over the, over the years from him. Work, work, I played on his solo albums. He played on my stuff. So we just, we, we work well together. Okay. So we just started, we just, one day we're like chatting on, online and we said, Hey, let's, let's work on some songs. We've got any ideas. And normally I would send him my ideas, my riffs and everything. This time I said to him, I go, you send me what you have. If you have anything, I want to be inspired and, and do something. And so he started sending me, track after track. I mean, they were just flooding in oh, wow. to the point where I was like, wow, okay, this, this is, they were on to something. And I loved what he was sending. It was definitely different than what I normally would have written. So it was really hard metal, rock, Black Sabbath-y, Dio, Deep Purple, type stuff. White Snake, all in one. And I was like, wow, this isn't what I would normally have written, but I love it. So then it challenged me. So then we did a couple songs, in a mode, and they came out real heavy. And I said to Steph, I'm going to call it Vinny Appice and see if he wants to drop some drums on these because they're perfect for him. Oh, cool. I literally sent him over to Vin 
Vin called me within 10 minutes of listening to him. M's, this is great. Count me in. I want to be a part of this. This wow. is great. And that's really what happened. That is and then awesome. We banged out a couple songs and right away. Next thing you know, we just started, our juices were flowing. We just started just writing songs and writing songs. And Vinny was getting into it. Vinny started rearranging some of the songs. And before you knew it, we had 11 tracks written within like a, two weeks. Whoa, that's fast. Jeez. It was crazy. I mean, that's all we were doing is just literally working on Screen Taker for like two weeks. Three of us were just constantly sending files all day long and back and forth and it was a lot of fun actually it wasn't work it was fun because it was like we were so inspired and, and like Vinny always says in his interviews that he was really inspired at that time and so was I and so was Steph obviously it, it just came easy no pressure it just came really easy we'll be right back after a word from our sponsors Have you ever thought about CBD and wondered if it's the right choice for you? My wife and I did. For a few years now, she suffered from some chronic pain, and we had discussed trying CBD, but didn't have any idea where or even how to get started. That's why we chose Pure Spectrum. They make the highest quality hemp-derived products and back it up by providing third-party lab tests for every single batch of products right on their website. For my wife, we started with some tincture and isolate, but there's also gummies, topicals, mints, and a lot more. Pure Spectrum not only has CBD products for wellness, they also have CBD for fitness and recovery, and there's even CBD for your pets. And if you're like me and not sure how to start, there's a ton of information on the website and chat options available. So go to purespectrumcbd.com to do your own research, and when you check out, Use the code PERFORMANCEANX for 15% off your order. Check them out on Instagram at Pure Spectrum Hemp and subscribe to their email list for sales, new products, and updates. Pure Spectrum, refined phytocannabinoid wellness products for all lifestyles. We didn't have a label behind us, so there was no pressure on, hey, you guys got to get this thing out here and, yeah. and all that. Because when you sign a deal, they want the product the next day. Yeah, We didn't have any... You know what I mean? Yeah. So we didn't have any worries like that. We just were just writing it. I didn't know what we were going to do. <laughs> we were even going to release it, really. And then oh, um, one day, Vinny said to me, he goes, we should get a deal with this thing. It's good enough. So we started shopping it and got some good offers from some a couple really big labels. And uh, I was talking to my manager, Jeff Keller, um, one day, because he manages the Peace Brothers. And he's we started coming out of the pandemic and we started booking a lot of peace dates and doing a whole tour and whatnot, booking a tour. And um, he said, what you been up to? I said, I got this great album I did with Vinny and this guy out of France called Steph Hahn. It was amazing. You should check it out. I sent it to him. He called me up and said, this is great. What are you going to do with that? I said, well, you're going to do something with it. Nah. We'll, get a, we'll get us a deal. And nice. he called me within like a couple hours and said, I got Deco Entertainment loves it. They want to sign it. Charlie over there. Wow. And really glad they did because they're a great label. And all of this happened because the gig you were going to do got canceled because of the pandemic. What do you mean? The, um, you weren't, you were about to tour with, uh, yeah, I have Peace Brothers. Was it, I'm trying to remember, was it, was it? It just come off a tour with the Peace Brothers. Okay. We I literally, yeah, we were out on the road for two weeks. With the Peace Brothers, we played. We played in, in Washington D.C. We played. Oh. That was one of our last shows we did. Oh wow! Cool story behind that is we did um, a show in Washington D.C. for um, all these politicians. It was like a private event, <laughs> and it was like us. Billy Gibbons was with, played with us, and um, Buck Dharma from Blister Cult. But it was all of us. We did this really cool show for the politician. Then the next day. Um, the one politician said to us, he, you guys, we had, a, we had a day off before we went to New York City to play the following night. So we had a day off. He said, you guys want to take a tour of the uh, Capitol building? So we had a private tour of the whole Capitol building, wow. places like nobody knew it would normally go to. Oh. Obviously, now you can't even go there anymore. Yeah. But, you know, but wow. um, but at that time, yeah, so that was really cool. Oh, but, yeah, we did that. And then all of a sudden, COVID, you know, we were in so many different airports. Jeez, I mean, we were literally... In Boston, we were in New Jersey, New York. I mean, a whole swing. Every night of the week, we were in different airports and, and stuff like that. Jeez. I don't know how we didn't get this COVID thing that everybody was getting. 
it was crazy. And then, um, what happened? So then we literally wound a tour down in New York city. And then the next day me and my fiance flew back to Buffalo to take a week off and we we're heading back out to do another run with the brothers. Okay. That's what and, I was thinking um, of. Yeah. That's, mm-hmm. that's what I was mean. And then what happened was, uh, geez, I mean, the world shut down. Yeah. And then Crazy. because it shut down, you got this whole other project going. Yeah. I mean, it, who would have thought we thought it was only me for a couple of weeks. All, all our dates got postponed yeah. and all that stuff as everybody else's did. And, um, before you knew it, a week turned into months, turned into a year. And then we just, you know, I, I'm a workaholic. I like, to, I like to do music, you know, it's every day. Right. Yeah. So I just said, okay, brother, just sitting around waiting. I'm going to, I'm going to record. I have a home studio at my house. So I started writing tons of songs and with other musicians and me and Steph were reaching out to each other. And like I said, I'm a focal point for us to get, because we were having fun. So you know? th- the band name is from a song off the London Fog album, right? It's, how did correct, you guys... Correct. decide that that was going to be the name for the band that song was a song written about ronnie james deal a tribute to him on the london fog it had me Vinny apathy steph play guitar and keyboards on it and rudy sarzo from quiet riot oh, wow. um, ozzy and all that he played bass on it that's awesome so we did yeah uh, uh, rudy and Vinny both as you know played with with ronnie yeah i always thought it was a cool song and um a cool title so Vinny, after we did this song called Stone Cold, um, that was the first song we wrote together. Vinny called me up and said, Hey, there's this German label that put out this compilation album uh, with all these big bands on it. And they want me to do something. And I sent them Stone Cold and they loved it. I said, Okay, great. Do you mind if we use it? And I said, 100%, let's do it. And he said, Well, what should we call it? And I said, Just call it the Vinny Apathy Band. He goes, I don't want to, Vinny's not vain like that. He doesn't like the, you know, he's, he has no ego, zero ego. Yeah. He's like, I don't want to call it that. I go, well, let's call it Vinny Apathy Scream then. Well, okay. And, you know, he goes, I like to scream. I just don't want, you know, I don't, he doesn't, you know, he doesn't like to be, he's not a bragger guy. You know, he doesn't, you know what I mean? Yeah. He doesn't want to be the center said, of attention. Not at all. He said, I love it. Let's just call it like a band. I said, how about Scream Taker, the song that we did off? Because I love that. So he submitted it as Scream Taker. You know, they put it out on an album and all that, that song. And, um, and I guess it's just, we said, okay. Then when we got the record deal, we were going to call it a Jim Crean record, but it did, didn't sound like a Jim Crean record. It sounded like a band. Yeah. Because my records, they have, there's a certain sound to a record, as you know. Yeah. They're more AOR type music, whereas this was more of a band, metal, hard rock band. Yeah, it's definitely harder. They have yeah. band, D.O. sounding mm-hmm. band. So let's just keep that Scream Taker for the album and that's what we did. And it's great because it fits. In, yeah, and in so many of these episodes that I've done, one of the hardest things people tell me is that is, is finding a band name. So mm-hmm. if you can find a band name that's unique and it didn't take any effort, that's just gravy. You're right. And you know what? It just came natural. It fit. When I said Scream Taker, it just fit what we were doing. And everything about it felt right. Like that 
it sounds cool. It's easy to say, easy to remember, Scream Taker. It's just cool. It's just, I don't know, it fit. And um, we bounced a bunch of other names around that percent good. And that one just seemed to stick, and, and, and it really is. And that's what we did, you know? So that's, I'm glad we did, because it's, and morphed into a band <laughs> and it's it's 12 original tracks which i know in, in uh, looking at the other albums and listening to them you do like to include usually include one or two covers but this is all 12 originals w- were there ever any idea of doing any covers or was it just hey we've got 12 originals already let's just go with that you know when uh, you're right on my solo albums i always like to sneak a cover in there because i i always like doing covers because of one reason i like to do my my take on a cover mm-hmm like and make it sound my, like my own. Yeah. So I've always put covers on the last four or five solo albums I did. I actually released three covers albums out too. Yes, I saw. Yeah. So I have three covers albums out there. <laughs> um, and this one we 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 did um we covered Country Girl by Sabbath. But we just decided not to put it on there. We said let's just do all original. Oh wow. Oh see, I'd love to hear that. Just because we were in such a in such a and we were so inspired to write songs at that time. There was really no reason to do a cover on me. And it sounds like you guys were on quite a roll, too. You, we were. So. It was fun, exciting. Looking back at the whole experience, and you bring me back to that. It was so fun to just get the files back from, like, Vin and say, oh, wow, look what he did there. I wouldn't have thought to do that, but that's cool. And I would, like, re-sing it over to what he did, and then I'd send it over to Steph. Steph would send it back to me and put, like, a new solo on it. And I'd say, that's clever. Let me try oh, the vocal over that. So it just was so inspiring. And we just had so much fun making this record that in all honesty, it didn't feel pressure at all. It, felt, it was exciting. That's awesome. Well, I, I wanted to tell you, the, the two standouts to me, my, my favorites are uh, Like Love Takes. Galloping Iron Maiden sound to it, and uh, what's the other one? Uh, Shine on. Mm. Those are two of my favorites. That Shine on is kind of creepy sounding. beyond creepy sounding <laughs> and it wasn't a song that was going to even make the record we had 11 songs written talked to the label we signed a deal and then they said well you got 11 songs why don't you throw one more on there in case we need it for because it was released in europe and japan and all that yeah they, said, um, they always like to have an, a bonus track yeah so me and steph started writing a song shine on and it was not coming along. I kept sending it over to Vinny and Vinny kept going, ah, okay. And then he sent it back to me and say, I don't really like the way it's going. And it's, there's no flow to it. It was different than what you're, you're hearing. Okay. And it was real creepy. Like you said, it had with the falsetto kind of <laughs> creepy beginning. It's, it sounds like a horror movie. It does. It? It sounds like something like, you know, you're waiting for, I don't know, a guy to jump out behind the couch or something. Yeah, like. exactly. And it's, and it's got that big beefy riff to go with it. Mm-hmm. It's just, oh, that's it's creepy. You're right. That's a great word to describe as creepy. And so <laughs> it just wasn't coming together. And finally I sent to Vinny, I said, well, do what you want to do with it. But we just won't do the song. And he goes, well, let me try something. So he started chopping it all up and, and, and whatnot and sent it back to me. And I said, okay, all right. So I, I redid all the vocals to that creepy way it is now. And then they all, they both came back to me and said, that's what we want. Oh my God. So 
that we submitted the song and the label loved it. And um, we said, let's make that the last song on the record. And I think that's a cool way to end the song album. Absolutely. Real, real creepy. And I noticed some of the lyrics and the songs have a, uh, like a cryptid supernatural reference to some of the lyrics. Is, is that, a, is there any type of overarching theme in the album or is it just an interest and every once in a while pops like the werewolves and vampires and it was during COVID. I was watching a lot of, <laughs> I was watching a lot of hammer films and <laughs> movies and things like that. Well, that and, makes you know, sense. Let's think about it. When you're out on the road like that, you're not, you don't have time to watch movies and stuff like that. You're, you're working. Yeah. So we weren't doing much of any, anything, but just watching movies and everybody's locked up in their house. So we were going through all our old movies, watching movies. So I was really inspired by a lot of that stuff. And at that time we were watching a lot of horror movies and spooky movies and stuff like that. So I wrote songs based on what I, I'd watch a movie and go, I'm, I'm inspired. I'm going to go write words to it. And I, and I think the words are some of my best lyrics ever. They're really clever because I got to take my time and write meaningful words. Yeah. So, okay. So there isn't, it wasn't necessarily intentional. It just kind of crept in through circumstance. Even the sounding out of the album, everybody says, "Well, it sounds like Dio and Black Sabbath." I hear that because, of course, you're going to hear it. We got Vinny on it. Yeah, you know, me and Steph are influenced by it, but I hear it as like a fresh sounding metal album, rock album. Mm-hmm. And I can't even say it's metal. I think it's just a rock album. To be yeah, like Eternity is a very commercial sounding rock song you could hear on the radio. Oh, for it's sure, not, it's not metal at all. Song. That, and 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 kill the beautiful the title track that's pretty heavy i like that's that. very sabbathy me too but, but it's very sabbath and it, but i think that's why i like it but i could definitely hear that on 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 uh rock stations you know when we first i was worried about that because we, well, i wanted to name the song kill the beautiful yeah you know because i just thought that was a and it's nothing to do with killing anybody or anything like that it's it means like you can't Kill the spirit inside. You can't build your beauty inside oneself. That makes if sense. If you're beautiful inside, it'll show, and people will see your beauty inside. Now, it depend doesn't matter what you look like or it's how you carry yourself. You can't kill the beautiful. I love that. And um, yeah, and that's what it really means. But it's open to interpretation. Of course. So I was real concerned that in this day and age, everybody's so worried about can't say kill. Oh, this guy wants to kill somebody. Oh, he said kill. These guys are out to kill people. You got to worry about, you know, how people are so touchy nowadays. Yep. So you got, you got to watch that. So I was worried that they were going to say, nah, let's call it like the beautiful or let's not call it anything. Let's call it. They were like, okay, that's what you want to call it. And I said, yeah, call it that. That's cool. Scream take, kill the beautiful. It, how badass is that? It is. And it, you know, it, it catches your attention, mm-hmm. especially in, like you said, in this day and age where everybody's walking on eggshells about what they're calling oh. everything. So. And it's killing everybody's creativity too, because even when you write songs, you can't just it, yeah. What's the word I'm looking for? Freedom of speech and freedom of of artistic value is just thrown out the window because you can't be yourself. You got to be politically correct. And you know what? Exactly. This album's not that. If you listen to that song, um, uh, Frontline. Yes. Great. Read track. the words. That, yeah. Thanks. And that was completely about COVID. It, but it's cryptid. I didn't come out and say, you know, I heard a lot of songs during that were written about COVID that from other, from a lot of bands and they would just blatantly say, you know, COVID, this, that, that yeah. lockdown, that song's not, it's, it's about that, but it's not written like that. It's, it's up to interpretation. But if you read the words, you can, in the book that you can really read between the lines. That's basically about all the nonsense that was going on with COVID. Right. Yes, COVID was horrible, but there was a lot of game playing throughout the whole thing. And that's what that song's about. Because the words, the heroes are on the front line, meaning the real people that are people that were fighting for us. Yep. On the front. So have you guys been 
touring the the album yet? That's a great question. No, we have not. Because stuff's in France, right? Um, so what's going to happen is we're debuting the band January twenty sixth at the Heavy Metal Hall of Fame. Oh, so that's nice. going to be yeah. It's a big wow. deal because all our peers are there, and you know, there's a lot of big name people that are going to be inducted. We're, that- we're going to be that place. That's that. you got to be comfortable with that because that you're in the Buffalo yeah. Music Hall of Fame. So you, that's that's right up your alley. Yeah, and it's a great way to go out and say, okay, wow, what a way to way to, what a way to debut you your your project when in front of all these amazing musicians. Yeah, we're so, going to come out and just say, here we are. Have you guys settled on a on a bass player for that show yet? That's a great question. We do. We have a few guys in in mind. We just got to kind of see if it's all going to come together but it's going to be a, someone that's definitely there it's going to be amazing it'll fit with what we're doing i mean there's some great play, some amazing bass players out there oh yeah that we want to reach out to and see if they'd be interested awesome i wish i could get there i i'd love to hear this i i'd love to hear this live i mean i was like studio yeah. albums are great but i you know how good it is when when the band comes out and, and crushes it live so i'm dying to hear this live Vinny said the same thing. He can't wait to play these songs live because think about it. How cool will that be to hear, um, uh, you know, Frontline or one of those songs live or, you know, those songs would just would be really cool to, to hear live. Stone Cold would be amazing live. Mm. I can't wait to yeah. hear that. Still Beautiful is be cool. Yeah. So how can people find the album? Uh, can they, is there a social media presence? How can they buy a copy? I mean, we're on Facebook, but there's, um, you can just go to Deco. D-E-K-O Entertainment. Um, and there's like a bundle pack that you can get now. It's a t-shirt, really cool t-shirt, a signed book, autographed booklet by the three of us. Nice. And it was all the lyrics, all the credits there. And then of course the disc. It's going to be, we're talking about putting it on a vinyl now. So that that's going to. That is awesome. Oh my gosh. I'm so. I'm I mean, the response to this thing has been unbelievable. Like more so than what we thought was going to happen. And we are just going to release a cool record. That's all. That was the whole idea behind it. Just. Let's release a cool record. Then we started getting offers from South America to come play there. Oh, wow. And uh, all this crazy stuff has been happening to the point where it's like, wow, okay, I guess we're going to, this is going to become something good. That is awesome. Well, when, you know, when you guys, when music is created, not out of a commercial, a, a, a desire to be successful, just out of fun. And, and mm-hmm. you can definitely tell. And it, it, it I think a lot of people are drawn to the genuineness of music like that. And I think that's what's happening with scream takers. So uh, congratulations on, on the al- already all the success that you're having with it. That's I'm, I'm thrilled to hear it. You know, when he told me a story about when they did the Dio Holy Diver, yeah. that was just supposed to be a, a Ronnie James Dio solo album. Not much more than that. They just hung out with the sound studio and uh, just were recording, having fun with it. Not with no intentions of really doing anything more than just being a Ryan James Dio solo up and the rest is history, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. So it's funny because I think when you go in there with the intentions of, of just having fun, it's, it's so much easier than pressure trying to make a great record. Absolutely. I agree so much. And I want to thank you for joining me, for, for being on the podcast and talking about the album. Really have enjoyed it. It's really fun. Even the creepy song. It's fun to listen to. So thank you so much for spending this time with me and, and tell me some awesome stories about the creation of this awesome new album. No, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. On. Thanks for guys like you that take the time to, you know, play our music and spread the word because uh, nowadays that's, you're all we got. You yeah. know, there's no, there's no more radio that we can just, you know, label will go put it out on, you just sit back and wait. Exactly. You know, we have to, we have to all go on hustle, work together. And thanks for, uh, thanks for doing that. Mm-hmm.